With 28 years of service to country and community, Sergeant Frank has plenty of life experience to share. When his service was complete, he wasn't satisfied with retirement. Sergeant Frank founded Adopt a Cop USA, a nonprofit organization that mentors kids with law enforcement officers in our schools. His vision is to change the perception of law enforcement one child at a time. This show covers a wide range of topics with people who make positive impacts on others' lives. This week's show features a great family who moved to Florida from Kentucky and started the Sugar Camp Ranch. This ranch is set up to accommodate kids of all ages and it won't disappoint. We will be talking with Jade and Kalia who run the Sugar Camp Ranch, but don't be fooled, the entire family, including the kids, make it what it is. It is my honor to introduce the one and only Sergeant Frank. Welcome to the Sergeant Frank Show. My co-host, the Bird Dog, and I are talking to two amazing Americans who run the operations at the Sugar Camp Ranch, an incredible facility located outside of Fort White, Florida. And I have to tell you, it's one of the most amazing places that your children can ever go. The camp was created to help educate our children about where the food they eat come from. It also teaches children responsibility and accountability for the food that they eat every day. Their children have benefited from this program by helping raise the livestock and the petting zoo animals as well as give their own tours to the children that visit their ranch. I, I have to tell you, um, this is this the Sugar Camp Ranch is a facility that can change a child's life. I can tell you it changed my life as an older child. And when you meet adults and, and, and people that care about humanity, care about the planet, you know, have a faith in God, it changes everything, and these children that are coming out there, with the, the work that you guys are doing is unbelievable. And what are the goals for Sugar Camp Ranch in the future? Ooh, where do we start? Well, obviously, like, like we said, our educational aspect is super important to us, so we want to keep the educational aspects going. Um, and the challenge is to marry the fun to the education and the learning. Um, you know, we want to expand. This year, we're expanding our camp program. We did um, last year. We we do an introduction to horsemanship camp, and this is this will be our second year of offering it. But we're also expanding our camps, and we're going to do. We have a camp, which we're actually calling it Camp Unplugged, and we're going to be teaching the the fundamentals of um, agriculture and farming and some of the day to days basically what our what our kiddos do every day we're going to be inviting the public to come and participate in that and learn about how you know how this all works and um, it should be a lot of fun we're excited about that and, and expanding into that camp as well and adding that to what we've already been doing um, we have we have a lot of ideas of how we'd like to get um, mr clay and um, more, more involved and do some other things with, um, you know, the the growing and you know teaching the kids. Everything kind of goes back to teaching the kids because that's what you know. Th there are a lot of kids in our area, even though they live in a rural area, they're just not able to be exposed to, you know, the farm, you know, the fresh air, the the pond, the fun, the hay. Um, on a daily basis, uh, they come here and think that this is tons and tons of land, even though, you know, acreage wise, it's not huge. It's just, um, you know, it's, it's just more than what they're used to. So, so that's part of the goal is just to continue to expand that educational opportunity. What are the ages for the camps and how do people contact you to sign their children up for the camps? The ages for both of our camps are actually from seven to 14. And you can find more information about each of the camps and the registration um, forms on our website at www.sugarcampranch.com. And you just click on the summer day camps at Sugar Camp link, and it'll take you to both of our options for our camps right now. Um, the registration process is super straightforward. You fill out the form, send it to us. 
Um, at that point, Jade will contact you. We make sure everything lines up that you're registering for the correct camp you want to be and that your child is gung ho and ready to, to participate and learn. And then we just start, we're, we're in the, the preparation stages and we are super excited about our camps this year. Last year, we did two introduction to horsemanship camps with over 27 kids. And we had kids come as far as from Virginia um, to, to do our, our camp with us last year. So we're very excited. Wow. And uh, is there a possibility you could make some exceptions for like really older kids for a camp? Really older kids. If, if we have these really older kids come, hint, hint, uh, we're putting them to work. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was afraid I knew, she was going to say that. I knew that was what coming. Like, what if it's a canine? What if it's an old dog? Well, no. then you have to join Reckon in the cleaning up <laughs> of all things drop around here. <laughs> all right. That sounds like a, that sounds like a deal. So, so tell us how your kids have learned responsibility and accountability by raising and taking care of the animals on the farm. Well, I'll speak because the two oldest are both my girls and like Clea said they primarily have the responsibility of the day-to-day -day care of the animals and um you know in a in a day and time when it's hard to pry ourselves away from technology um like you i mean we were talking before about you know things being therapy <laughs> I, it's it's awesome responsibility. I don't know if we if I call it therapy or if I call it um, just the the detach. We call it unplugged here at Sugar Camp Ranch is actually what we call it, um, being unplugged because you know it's it's it teaches them so much you know in how to get outside of themselves and you know put the best interest of others and you know not just the animals but the other people on the you know the family we're counting on them to complete their task they're part of this and they understand that but their their understanding has grown so much since we started we opened up in September of you know understanding that it it's the animals it's the family and now it's the community that counts on them to take care of of the animals because we have visitors that keep coming back over and over and over again to see our animals and so it's it's super it's super cool to watch how they've taken ownership of this and and you know how it, it gives them something to keep them unplugged and we've had so many people comment about you know the fact that we have so many kids out here and you know no, nobody's looking down at their phone you know at the moment i'm not saying our kids never use technology but um it's just it's been a it's been an awesome thing for the kids i really love that you said that unplugged because part of the part of the that's funny i don't know if you've been listening to our podcast but i'm sure you've been hanging on all of them or you're trying to catch up there's so many of them but one of the things that we like to say is when people go out to the woods or they go on a fishing excursion with our outdoor crusader program is it gives the families a chance to disconnect from the world and reconnect with the people that mean the world to them. Absolutely. So I really love that you use that that unplugged, and, I, and I'm, I'm definitely going to borrow that um, on occasion also. <laughs> so you come from Kentucky. Your dad was motivated to build a big farm, ranch, barn, and playground, and petting zoo. And you guys built a giant maze for uh, during the fall season. And now you have children learning about nature, learning about where, now do kids ask questions about, well, where does the milk come from? Do, are they curious or is this something that as they see it, they start asking questions about? They are curious, which is really, it's really reassuring um, thinking that we might be headed in a direction where kids don't really care. Um, there are still some that do. Um, the, the animal husbandry aspect um, is something that, you know, is important. You know, we've all, we've talked about already that, you know, we ourselves didn't even realize how much it took to take care of animals. That's been one aspect of it. The, the questions that we get about where our food comes from, we do a little program in the wintertime called, um, it, it's actually how a farm says goodnight and how we prepare a farm for winter. A lot of children don't realize that there's preparation that goes into, go, you know, even though we live in Florida, there's still, you know, enough change that we have to do preparation for that, obviously across the country and other places. So we've had, we've had several, several children out here um, over the course of the year and 
throughout the different seasons of the year. And we've had a really cool opportunity to kind of get to enlighten them with our little greenhouse um, that we have here, you know, talk about, you know, what it takes, you know, to put food on their plate. So oh, can I, can I, I hate to say pause you there, but I learned that from the law <laughs> dog, but um, I don't know if you guys got that pause. Yeah. All right. Anyways, um, <laughs> I, it's good that you guys have a lot of corn there because I have the most corniest jokes, but <laughs> With, with that in mind, when you said the word greenhouse, a lot of our listeners are like, is that like a grow house? They don't, because we come up from a law enforcement background. We know what a grow house is, but I think a lot of our listeners don't know what a greenhouse house. Could you just explain that for a second? Well, the greenhouse that we have here actually is, it's a small, it's not green, it's clear, <laughs> but it is, it what it does is it creates a self-contained environment to um, start plants. So Mr. Clay, who is our horticultural, our horticulturalist, he actually just had about 300 watermelon plants and tomato plants that he started from seed, and he used the natural humidity and um, temperature that's trapped within the plastic uh, <laughs> greenhouse um, itself to start these plants through the winter so that by the time that we get out of the frost months, we have starter plants that are ready to be put into the ground and become our watermelon plants for June and July. Without a greenhouse, you would have a two or three month delay on your ability to start seeds in the ground, which means that our crops actually wouldn't be ready until the season was already threatening them again with frost. So for, for things like strawberries, melons, tomatoes, it, it's essential that you get those started in a greenhouse so that you do have our summer crops. Thank you, thank you for explaining that. Um, has any represent representatives from the local grocery stores come to your farm and say, hey, man, could you stop doing this? You're ruining it for us. We're selling. People are telling you that, you know, you're telling us that tomatoes are supposed to be red and we're trying to sell these green things in our store. <laughs> no, we've not had anybody stop, stop by so far. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just wondering because I sometimes what if, if I have to, like if, you know, it's an emergency situation and we have to stop at a fast food restaurant. I, I've never seen this color of tomato uh, in the wild, so I'm just the orange green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've never seen that, so I, I don't know what farms they grow those on, but um, scary. Not on, <laughs> Not on yours, that's for sure. Mr. Clay has nice red tomatoes. <laughs> nice. I'm. I'm. I can't wait for um, for the crop season to come in because I know where I'm going to be shopping for my stuff um, this year. Well, Y'all had. Um people over there from different schools like almost every day is that like a normal thing for y'all i mean do you have people at your place every day not every day we have hosted we've hosted probably yeah we've probably hosted close to 30 um school groups this year um so it's definitely not been every day we we're pretty heavy the schools like to come out to the farm in the fall we had a few groups through the winter months, and then this past couple of weeks, we've had a lot of spring field trippers. So we do um, we do an anti-bullying um, program um, with Spookily, the Square Pumpkin, and um, we're, part of, we're part of their farm program. And the Spookily has a has a friend that lives on Holiday Hill Farm with him. That's Jelly Bean and the Unbreakable Egg. <laughs> so. We do those programs and it draws a lot of our elementary school students out um, to come and hear the stories I read to the kids um, on most of the trips. And then, you know, we usually have some things that go along with those programs. So those, that's why we have our primary, primary draws are in the fall and in the, in the spring so far. Awesome. Yeah, I was going to come, uh, or I did come by there a couple of days after we were there with the law dog and. I was surprised. Right. I was like, oh, I didn't know I'd be interrupting anything. So, and you, Jade was like, when we were there, I was like, oh, I'll be right back. And Jade's like, no, don't worry about it. And I was like, okay, maybe she didn't want me to come back because there was something going on I didn't know. So, <laughs> no. so I just came a couple of days later or the next day. I can't remember. Did y'all get to taste any of that uh, sausage? Yeah, I think I think Dad was, um, I think he was cooking it up and giving samples out. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure. <laughs> Well, I can't wait for that kitchen to get completed because I know where I'm going to be eating most of my dinners when I get a chance to get over there. <laughs> Absolutely. Be a little farm to table. 
Yeah. Oh. Bait to plate. I got some great ideas for it. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it after the show, but I think you guys are gonna perfect. I, I got a great idea. So I, I got a question because I didn't know this, but two days after we were there, or I didn't know this till a couple days after he went there, but my grandson goes to Fort White Elementary and apparently they did a field trip out there and uh I was asking him about it and he his big thing was that slide. So I gotta know who's Whose inspiration was the slide? Who came up with, let's build this gigantic slide? Uh, we've got to blame this on our five-year-olds. <laughs> we have um, five-year-olds that secretly at heart want to be American Ninja Warriors. So um, any time that we started saying that we were moving on to building some of the fun stuff on the farm, it kept going back to the playground and the slide. So um, we're going to blame Maddie Wall mainly on the slide preparation, but it was – an experience because while dad was an experienced contractor building homes and even commercial buildings, he'd never built a obstacle course slash playground. So it was trial and error and it was fun and it's still fun. Yeah. That, that was the, the one, I mean, he has animals as well and he comes over here and plays with mine all the time. So that wasn't as exciting for him cause he's already getting to do that, but he was like, Oh, the slide was awesome. And <laughs> so he was really yeah. into the slide. But a five-year-old, yes. you know, it was funny you said you're five-year-olds because he is five. Yes, and our, our, our kids dictated a lot of what happened and what went in around here. We joke that we the things that we put in are things that we wouldn't let them do normally, like our hay bale run. Traditionally, had we climbed on a hay bale, bale when I was a kid, we would have been chastised and thrown off the farm for ruining good animal feed, <laughs> and here we encourage it. So, um some of our things that are fun are fun because they're taboo, and that's what we like about them. Yeah, one of the most interesting things I thought that I liked was the uh, the slingshot thing. I thought that was a pretty ingenious idea. We kind of adapted a lot of um, of these agritourism farms across the nation have have corn cannons and paintball guns and things of that nature, but we are much more traditional in what we do. We're not um, mechanically inclined by any means, but we can build just about anything out of wood. So the um, the slingshots were second nature uh, when it came to that. We, we like the idea of a good competition. So we have two of them set up side by side with targets. And that is a lot of fun. I think it's great that you use actual physical power as opposed to mechanical power because that's a big problem in our schools and our society with our adults that are not getting exercise. I mean, I can tell you that if you don't use these muscles, you, they will start breaking down over time. So it's important that you guys are sharing that with our children to get them on the right track. That, that was actually one of the big things when we started building our obstacle course too, is that we wanted to challenge them physically and mentally. And the obstacle course is a little daunting when you first look at it. But it's fun to watch a kid who's come two or three times go from they can't do something like the rope ladder climb or the Burma bridge to now it's second nature to them and their hand-eye coordination and their balance is, you know, improved. And I was watching our girls this evening, and when we first built it, it was scary, and there was lots of tears because they couldn't do stuff. And tonight they were whipping around that whole thing out there like it, you know, just was something they've been doing their whole lives. Maybe we can challenge one of the local SWAT teams against the kids and do a little competition about your obstacle course and see who wins. I think they're that would be win. fun. <laughs> I think they'd be intimidated because they might fear that the fact that the kids might beat them. That's right. <laughs> hey, it has become a big hit with all the dads out here on the farm. We, uh, on several occasions, have have had to like slow things down so everybody can watch two or three dads race around this thing. That's All the great. kids stop playing so that they can see whose dad's going to win. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like that. That's really, really cool. Well, I have to tell you, I, I'm <laughs> bird dog. How did we meet this incredible family? Uh, we were just trying to get some supper and it wasn't even really a good supper. Cause we stopped at Moe's. <laughs> and <laughs> it was a quick thing and we would i can't remember i think we drove up from palm beach that night and uh we were tired and it was like just before we get to my house because when you get past you know get off 75 and and you get into high springs or just past high even in high springs there's not a whole lot open at that time 
So we stopped in at Moe's, and uh, Kalia and her husband were sitting out there with their kids. And, uh, well, of course, Sergeant Frank can talk to anybody. So he just started talking to y'all, and then, boom, here we are. I have to tell you, one of the things that caught my attention was the incredible politeness of your children, which we don't see as often as we'd like to. I, say, I appreciate that because the reason we were sitting outside in the dark eating that night is because I was afraid to take the three of them into the restaurant <laughs> at that late hour. Actually, didn't well, he, didn't uh, then one of your? I think the, one of the girls said hi or something. That would be Emery. Emery is yeah. a lot like her dad. She knows no strangers, and she was very excited to see you guys walk past. <laughs> well, I think probably I'm sure Sergeant Frank was wearing some kind of police looking shirt because I don't think he owns anything else. <laughs> and uh, I think it's great that kids see when they see that, especially. You can tell which kids have manners and they respect um, law enforcement, military, you know, all that, first responders. And it shows a, a, a huge testimony to the parents and their, their incredible parenting skills that they're teaching the kids the right things and that, that they reach out to those people that are there to help them. So I admire that. And, I, and obviously you and your husband are doing the right thing with your kids. And as well as Jade, you know, with her kids are equally um, polite and it's just – it's very refreshing and it gives us a lot of hope with our program because we do a lot of work down south and i can tell you um the manor bug um i think it's somewhere in around orlando it gets stamped out it doesn't make it all the way down south yeah that is that is very unfortunate and we are really really happy to say that the kids that come here to the farm even the kids that come from jacksonville and gainesville that have never been on a farm, they tend to have very good manners that they've been out here. And we've, we've been really pleased to see that. Well, that's well a, I'm sure it rubs off. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Birdo. No, I was just going to say, it really is a different world. Uh, the further North you get in Florida, because there's so many people packed in the one little area down South. That's, and you've got probably uh, 10 to 15 different walks of life, you know, diff people from everywhere all mixing in together and just somewhere the manners are just going to the wayside, you know, it's like when you get up towards, you know, country people are just uh, taught to be nice and they don't have to deal with all the, the stresses and all the craziness that goes down, you know, down the South. So it's just that everybody up here teaches their kids manners and teaches their kids what they're supposed to. And I don't mean everybody, but most, you know, and down South, you know, most of the kids are just getting getting out of hand, and, you know, most of them don't have fathers, and they live with single moms who have to work, and they work all the time and leave their kids at home, and, you know, they got to fend for themselves. And so that kind of tears up uh, uh, the kids' learning, you know, situation as well. So with that, with that statement, Kalia and Jade, tell us um, what you think the influence – that your faith has with the in in direct proportion to the manners and and the things that your children learn from your faith um from your parents and your your other adults on the farm and how that equates to how they behave with uh, the public well our faith is paramount and number one um it's our driving force for everything that we do um our children you know, they they not only are, are getting it at home from mom and dad, but they're they're getting it from everyone else. Like you said, all of the other adults that are here on the farm, um, we we incorporate our faith in what we do when we bring school groups out. Um, we you know, we pray with them before we begin our day for safety, for good weather, <laughs> um, just and just being thankful um, being able to be together and do what we love, um, we are very, very, very thankful to God for the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, it is, it is not something that we take for granted at all. And our children, um, one, my daughter, my oldest daughter, um, she, she says, you know, we're more responsible uh, as children when we have parents that are faithful in teaching us what God's word says. And it, I, I just, that rings true. And she doesn't know how much truth is in that. So I, I'm happy that she can see that, you know, being exposed to um, adults 
besides mom and dad that, you know, that have the driving force of their faith behind them, um, you know, it, it plays a huge role because it's, it's, they, it's not something that we just put down at the end of the day and walk away from, you know, it's, it's in everything we do. And it's, it's cool that we can experience it not only at home, but also on the job, so to speak. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we take with us um, in all, all places. So they get to see how that's walked out, um, you know, when you're, you know, just, just in the things, the everyday things, you know, when, when you're having to do a job that you don't like to do, when you're having to deal with someone who is not happy or you, you're having to deal with someone who is, you know, just, just any of the many things that you experience when you're dealing with the public, um, it, it's a great teaching ground for our kiddos when it comes to faith because it's, there's a lot that goes on out here on the farm that lends itself to very deep theological discussions later on at the house. If, if you, if you know what I mean, I mean, it's just, I right. it's just the way it is. So it's, it's an awesome opportunity that God's given us to be able to, to do what we do and to have, to have the impact that it does on our kids. Well, I think you're right. A hundred percent. And I'm pretty sure the Bible starts um, with a story about some people in a garden, actually. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> for all the opportunity that was there. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, and, and I think that's really great. And I think you're, you know, I think our children are craving structure. And I think there's a lot of truth in the words that you're saying, because I think our kids are looking for that structure and they're looking for that instructions and they're looking for that testimonies and they're looking to have some guidance and i think a lot of our american public is missing the boat with that as well because they do have a solution for the violence pollution in their very hands if they would just open it up and read it so i think that's really beautiful and and thank you for sharing with that with us on our show today and for our listeners out there that are sometimes dealing with the pressures on this this cynical crazy world that we lived in, in law enforcement for 25 years and i think a little bit of that guidance would have gone a long way to prevent some of the issues that we had to deal with as law enforcement officers out there in the public. Absolutely. So, um, I have to tell you, I'm, we're almost out of time and this is definitely not going to be the last show that we do about the sugar camp ranch. Bird dog. Is there any other questions that you have, sir? Actually, I do have a question. I was just curious. Um, I know that your family spends a lot of time together and does everything together. Do y'all do like a, a Sunday supper or anything like that where the whole family gets together? Or do you have enough of each other like because you're with each other 24-7? <laughs> that's funny. And it's that's funny that you asked. Um, Sunday, Sunday. Well, we do have lunch together every Sunday. Um, we, we actually have a fellowship lunch at church after church every Sunday with our whole congregation. Okay. And it so happens to be that, that our brother-in-law is the pastor. So <laughs> we have lunch oh, awesome. together there every Sunday. So it's hard to uh, skip out when you live together, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, no, um, we actually, believe it or not, we, you know, it's not a perfect world and we're, we're all sinners. So it's, it's not a perfect situation every single day, but, um, Hey, you know, you got to take the good with the bad and, and there's a learning opportunity in, in that as well. But, but, um, we actually do enjoy being together, which I know is hard to believe, but we really, we really actually do enjoy being around each other. We love, we love each other's children and, um, it's, you know, it's a blessing. And I think we're able to find the blessing in that, even on the days that everybody might not be having their A game. <laughs> yeah. you said, oh, That's really beautiful. You said earlier that uh, your dad, Barry was uh, skeptical about how this ranch was going to work, but uh, it seems to me when I saw him that he enjoys the heck out of it a lot. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. He is the, he's the glue that binds. He is our, um, our face forward on everything. Um, the man has never met a stranger and God has gifted him with the gift of gab. And <laughs> it, it is, it's an awesome thing though, to watch him. I feel like he's probably the happiest he's, he's ever been, um, getting to work with the kids and the grandkids and have everybody together. And it's hard work, 
but it's like that honest, good, sweaty, at the end of the day, have a glass of tea and talk about it kind of work. And it's, it's just, it's amazing. And we're really proud of what we do. So that, you know, that gives you that extra oomph to get it done. Well, when, when you, when you actually get to enjoy uh, the fruits of your labor, which is what, what you guys are doing, there's no measure. You can't buy that in any store anywhere. No way. Because you've earned it and your kids are earning it every day when they do their chores and they probably don't even see it as chores. They see it as part of life and it's just what you do. So I think that's a really amazing and beautiful thing that you're in, you're passing down to the next generation and I'm sure they'll pass it down to their children as well. We hope so. So tell everybody one last time before we go, um, all your social media platforms, your websites, your Facebooks and things like that, how they can get in touch with you. So um, we, you could get in touch with us. Um, we, we have a Facebook page, um, Sugar Camp Ranch. We also have a website, which is uh, sugarcampranch.com. And um, we are accessible by phone, by email. All of our um, information can be found on our Facebook page and our website. Um, we manage those, Kalia and I, so um, Facebook messaging, we usually have a pretty quick response on any Facebook messages that we receive, emails, um, we handle those as well, so um, it's it's pretty much, you're going to talk to one of us, so so um, any any way that you is best for you to get in touch with us, um, just reach out, email, phone, like I said, Facebook Messenger, all great ways to get in touch with us. I think I also saw a Campbell soup can with a string on it at the front gate that you can actually talk to somebody at the absolutely. main house. That's, that's absolutely. <laughs> no, we're a little more technological than that. But... <laughs> it's not Campbell's. It's uh, it's something else. It's. There you go. Very nice. And Bird Dog, why don't you tell our listeners how they can get a hold of Adopt Cup USA and help us with our efforts as well. Well, obviously, our billions of listeners are already f have already found us on YouTube because that's where this uh, podcast is going to be. But our YouTube channel is Adopt a Cop USA official site, and you can't forget the official site because there's a couple other uh, people out there that have a, something similar to Adopt a Cop. Um, we have a Facebook page, which is also Adopt a Cop USA official site. And then we have two other Facebook pages that go along with a couple other programs that are, un, you know, incorporated into Adopt a Cop USA. And that's our Sergeant Frank's Bird Dog Posse. That's where most of our law dog information goes out. Although <laughs> we have been putting most of our stuff out on the main site. But uh, and then we have Adopt a Cop USA Outdoor Crusaders, which is for our hunting and fishing episodes and anything outdoorsy. Our website is uh, www.myaacusa.org. That stands for My Adopt a Cop, basically, USA.org. So it's myaacusa.org. And I had to explain that because a lot of people come up to us when they see the website on the truck and go, What's My Acusa? You know, <laughs> they can't figure out that it says MyAACUSA. <laughs> I think we're going to create a mythical uh, creature about the Mayakusa. It's like this big, hairy beast yeah, with a cowboy be awesome. hat that comes out of the woods. <laughs> it's a Mayakusa. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know, that might, that might pick up. People be and like, if you What's talk real loud, If you talk too loud, he might come out of that truck. Be careful. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Well, Kalia and Jade, and to and to the hundreds of people in your family that live at their farm, <laughs> uh, we we really, really, really love everything that you guys are doing. We admire everything you're doing. We want to support you guys a thousand percent. And at Adopt the Cop USA, we're going to share everything you guys do, and we're going to do everything we can to get the word out for all the kids that, in the area to come down there and see where their milk comes from, where cheese comes from. Where it doesn't it, it, it doesn't come out of a, a brown square box that's that's by the way that's not real cheese don't don't eat that that's that's <laughs> not good for you that's put that you know use that for actual grease or something but don't don't put it in your body yeah. um the, the the you know the corn on the cob you know all that stuff and um 
you know, it's it's important to know where your food comes from. And, and if, if, if you can't pronounce the word on the package, then then again, it's probably not good for you to eat it. So don't don't eat that. <laughs> And uh, again, like I said, this is not going to be the first or last show. I mean, this is definitely the first show, but it's not going to be the last show. And I see a lot of future engagements with Adopt a Cop USA and obviously the Sugar Camp Ranch, which is the very best Sugar Camp Ranch we've ever been to in the Fort White area ever. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks so, for uh, talking with us today. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you all so much. We're so excited that you guys have taken an interest in us that we get to do some things together and we're excited about all your ideas well um i have to tell you when you were talking about the um the 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 playground and the competitiveness of it and all that and i've been i've been chewing danny's ear about this and he's like dude we got a million things that we're trying to do and and he's like he wants to slap me around a little bit about it but um I have this crazy idea for a game show and I, I maybe it won't be like a traditional game show. It'll actually be good for people to watch. And um, it, I, I think there's a, a situation where if the kids came out with their parents and they competed for different like things at, at the, at the farm, you know, like this, the slingshotting and the, and the obstacle course, and maybe they have to shuck so much corn. And I mean, it, it could be such an amazing, fun activity um, at the farm, and it's, it's something that uh, we should probably talk about. But but one of the things that I, I've, I've been talking about for a long time, and we just haven't had a place to, to film it, was a program uh, that we wanted to call From Bait to Plate, where the kids who actually go out and they catch you know a fish, they clean it, and then they prepare it in the kitchen. So mm -hmm. I was thinking it'd be cool to take like some of your kids out fishing, maybe like in Steenhatchie, and they catch all these different species of fish, and then we bring them back to the farm, and we clean the fish, and then we do a cooking show in that new kitchen, cooking all that fish with the other vegetables that you guys raise. I, I think it could be an amazing, engaging thing that a lot of people would be excited about watching and trying to participate in as well. That, that's exciting. I'm not kidding you. I've been – Danny's going to kill me because I, I do this all the time to him, and he's like <laughs> – <laughs> what are you doing well you know it's like we try to we, i told him we can't like branch out and do a million things we gotta stay in the lane for a little bit until we get out there you know it's something to think about and i think it would give you guys some really beautiful exposure in the community and 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 outside of that because other people in the country are going to be approaching you guys i can guarantee you that when they see this and then you're going to see little little affiliates or you know almost like a franchise but they probably don't want a franchise they're just going to do the own their own thing but i think there's a possibility we could see more of these things popping up around the country and i, I don't think it's a bad thing i think it's something that could be really cool for our country i i agree i think that it's i think it's awesome the more kids we can get out on the farms the the more likely we are to not lose um we were we were told that like what like how many what percentage um two percent of the american population knows where our food comes from and of that two percent almost 80 percent is over the age of 60. yes yeah yeah i i would say probably 80 percent don't know where their food come from and like two percent right. do so you know right. but yeah. is that what you just said that's what, said. Yeah. That's what yeah. you were trying yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So it's important that we, we are leaving a legacy um, in the agricultural realm as well. Okay, that's going to be it for tonight. Frank, go ahead and uh, close us out. Thank you for joining us today on the Sergeant Frank Show. And a special thanks to our guest, Kalia and Jade, for their incredible work they do with our children in the community. We'll see you guys next week on the Sergeant Frank Show. Young one, it's not cool to be a thug. There is nothing good about going selling drugs. The money don't mean nothing when you're harming everyone. And you can get killed bringing pain to your mom. Take a legal substance and you can OT. Overdose from nasty chemicals in the streets. Live a happy life, you gotta keep your hands clean. And most importantly, think about your family. I know you're smart. To do right and not throw your life far away. Instruction and terror punch your family. I know you're still the 14, 1097.
be the one to make the change. change And it starts with you To make it in this world, you gotta stay in school Got some friends living by the streets and play the fool Now they're in jail in the summer 22 Years to life, can't see the outside Can't watch this kid grow